SmartSuite made a huge release, which includes the addition of a Gantt chart view and a dependency field type. This is huge for a lot of organizations because they've been looking for ways to better manage their projects inside of SmartSuite, and now they can. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help businesses like yours get implemented on SmartSuite and integrated to your various business applications. Before we get started here, I want to let you know that we have a free project management template that you can copy into your own SmartSuite workspace. This is really designed to help you better understand the profitability of your projects and managing expenses for your projects as well. So if that sounds useful for your team, go on over to our website and you can copy that template for yourself. So inside of SmartSuite, we have a new field type. So as you're adding a field, you can search for dependency and you'll be able to add that. Now, of course, you can only add one dependency field per table because it would get crazy if we tried adding multiple. So once we have that dependency field type, you can see how it manifests itself here. We can see our predecessors and our successors, the tasks that we're waiting on in order to do our task and the tasks that are currently waiting on this task before they can get started. We can drill into that by opening up a record and we can see again, and here's the predecessors. We've got different color coding here. So we can see that this one is in process, that we're waiting on this task to be completed for creating this SOW. And we can see we have a successor, this red icon, it's currently being blocked. And you can actually drill into these even further. You can get into that actual task itself to see, oh yeah, what's waiting on this to be completed. Now, what I really like is that we actually have a couple different ways that we can visualize this dependency field. So I'm viewing our predecessors and successors together, but some of you might want to be able to view them separately. So if we have our dependencies here, you press that little plus button, that's going to expand this. Now we can actually see our predecessors separate from our successors. And this really comes down to how you want to be able to visualize that on this view. Right now we're on a grid view. We're going to get into the Gantt, but you could add these fields separately on other views as well, like a Kanban, for example. And when we have it as these separate fields, then it really acts as just a linked record here. So we could go ahead and click into that individual task. Let's check out the settings for this field because we actually have a number of different things we can select here. So the first thing that we need to know right off the bat is that the dependency field is tied to a due date. The due date is at the heart of everything here. So you can have just the due date, you can have the start and the end date as part of that due date, but we're using a due date field, not a date field. For most organizations, I'd recommend that you stay in standard mode because this is going to behave how you typically think it would in a project management application. We have a few clients that could benefit from advanced mode, such as construction companies and manufacturing companies. If you need, instead of having finish to start, meaning we're done with this task and then we start the next task. Maybe you want to have start to start or finish to finish. If that's terminology that you're familiar with, that's when you're going to look for advanced mode. Also, if you need to have lag time between the different tasks. So for example, I finish this task and then we have to wait three days until the next task starts. But again, most organizations are going to be perfectly fine just starting with the standard mode. Here we can also see some options around auto scheduling. I'm going to show you what that looks like in the Gantt chart because it's a little bit easier to visualize. If we hover on the side, we can go ahead and click on create new view. And from here, we can choose a Gantt view. This is just like any of our other views that we're familiar with. Now, when we first get into our Gantt view, this can look a little bit funky depending on how much data you already have there, if you set up any dependencies already, if you've added dates to all this. So we're gonna give you some quick tips to get up and running with your Gantt view. The first thing that I'd recommend doing is figuring out how you wanna group and filter. This is very similar to other views that we have where we can add group buys and filters. In this case, I want to be able to group by the different projects that I have. So I'm gonna search for project here and add that. And that's gonna add now this extra layer of grouping. One of the features I really like here is that we can actually click to find where our project starts. So if you have all sorts of dates all over, maybe you're planning out six months in advance, really easy to be able to find that based on clicking on that icon. One of the reasons I like grouping by that project is if we are a PMO or we wanna be able to view multiple projects, then we can do this all in a single view and be able to look at multiple projects at the same time. Now, if you just wanna look at a single project, you can certainly do that too. That's where a filter would come in handy. So you could say, I only want to filter these tasks based on this specific project that I'm working on. Now, as we're taking a look at the Gantt view, you'll notice that there's this grid component on the side, which feels kind of like our grid views that we have. And then there's the timeline component here or the Gantt aspect of this. And so we're looking at these both at the same time. Now, if we only want to look at one or the other, we can hover here and we could say, let's collapse that and just look at the Gantt or we could expand this or we could even go full mode if we just want to see that grid view. Now, this grid view is going to be getting additional features in the future, such as being able to add your own custom field types to it. Right now, it's a 
little bit limited in terms of what we can see, but we've got our most important fields like the name of the task, the start, the end, the duration, and the owner. I really like that these fields are directly editable within this grid view rather than having to actually expand the record. You certainly can expand the record if you want to, but when you're making a lot of adjustments on the fly, it's nice to be able to do that in line. Now you'll notice on the Gantt side that when we have our tasks, we can go ahead and drill into those as well. When we hover on them, we see this little view, which is helpful. We can see start, end, and duration. But if we want to see more details about that task, we can click into the task itself. One thing you'll notice here is these little diamonds. These can be milestones. So if you give a certain task a start date and a duration of zero that's how you get that diamond icon so maybe you have some kind of deliverable that you want to do a milestone that's at the end of a given phase that's a perfect way to get this set up by only having that duration of zero okay at this point this still looks a little bit bland because we've got all of our tasks here and we don't really know a lot of information about that just by looking at it so if we go into our settings here let's go ahead and turn on our task labels that helps us see a little bit more here we can also turn on dependency areas I don't know if it's me being a little bit old school here, but I find this really helpful to be able to see the dependency arrows. But if you like it nice and clean, you can turn that off. Now, if any of your dependencies look a little bit funky on here, I'd recommend also sorting. You can sort based on the due date to make sure we've got kind of that waterfall approach as we're looking at our Gantt. To make this even more visual, you might want to check out the spotlight here. We've had the ability to create our own conditions in the past, but there's a new feature here where we can select a field and just have it color it based on that. So what I typically like to do is to have a phase and I color it this way, planning, execution, launch, and monitoring, for example. And now I can see where all those tasks lie within each of those phases. You could do that too for other kinds of fields that you have. Maybe you want to go by priority or you want to be able to see completion status. If you're working on projects with clients, it can be really helpful to share the Gantt view with them. So we can share this view, turn it on, give them a link. We can determine if we want to share all the fields. We can restrict access with a passcode. So if you want to make sure that only the client is seeing it, you can add that passcode and then you can open it up and they can see this Gantt view here. Again, with the information that you're allowing them to see, you can click and it can open up the view of those individual tasks to make this a really powerful collaborative tool. Let's take a look at a couple of the additional settings here. Another project management feature is highlighting a critical path so we can see the path of the tasks that we need to do to be able to get to the end. We can also show the project start and end points, which is helpful to see, especially if you have some long-term projects or projects that are overlapping. And then let's take a look at that dependency field one more time if we open that up. Now for auto scheduling, typically I would say we would auto schedule our tasks based on their dependencies. That may Makes sense I'd say for most organizations in this case what happens is when I drag and drop this now that moves out all my other tasks automatically now, if you want complete control over this, so you move a task and nothing else changes, that's where you disable that option. Now, the real question comes down to how do you think about your projects? When you are kicking off a project, are you saying, hey, we've got a start date of January 1st, and then we're going to figure out all the different dates that happen after that until we go live with our project? Or alternatively, are you looking at the go live date and you need to map out all the tasks that happen in advance to make sure that you hit that date? That's where if we go back into our dependency settings and we went to auto scheduling, we could say apply backwards scheduling. If we want to make sure, hey, our go live is March 1st or something like that, we could drag this out and now everything follows it as opposed to saying, oh, we're going to change the start date here. Now we're going based on when are we actually going live or when's the end of our project. A couple of features we're really excited about in the near future are being able to only focus on business days. So we don't want to include the weekends. So if a task takes five days. We want to make sure it's only three days this week and two days next week. We're going to ignore the weekends and being able to add our own holidays. So we want to make sure, hey, let's not plan anything if it's over this company holiday that we set up in the back end. I hope this has been helpful for you to see just how powerful SmartSuite's Gantt charts and dependencies can be. If you have any questions about your own SmartSuite setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. And remember, we've got that free template for you to get up and running quickly with your own project management.